Narcissists leave their victims with a deep soul injury and a deep soul wound. And these victims take years to resolve these wounds, to heal and to recover and finally move on somehow. There is so much injustice involved in such relationships because the narcissist escapes without any accountability. The moment they leave you, they jump into the next thing, into the next relationship and act as if nothing happened. And here you are trying to make sense of what the hell happened to you. They don't care. They don't even think about you. They saw you as an object, used you, threw you away. Which is why I say their selfishness is nauseating, beyond unacceptable. Their self-centeredness is incomprehensible and unfathomable. For these very reasons, in this episode, we are going to talk about seven unforgivable sins of a narcissist and how they escape accountability after causing so much destruction. If you're eager to learn more, please make sure to subscribe by pressing the subscribe button because that will help spread the awareness and push the bell icon to stay updated with everything latest that I post over here. Let's get started with sin number one, emotional vampirism. The narcissist feeds on your emotions, your empathy, your compassion, your affection, your resourcefulness, your capabilities that you have as a human being with an intact conscience. They feed on you. For what purpose? To feel in control, to feel the high of power. They love the fact that they're able to control you, they're able to abuse you, they are able to make you tiptoe around them, they are able to keep you hyper vigilant, they're able to intimidate you. At what expense? At the expense of your soul. In the process of making it work, what do you lose? You lose your sanity. You lose the perception of your reality. Your perspectives are changed. Your consciousness is altered. Your ability to process information, store and retrieve, that is changed, that is altered. Basically, you lose yourself and they don't give a damn about it. They don't care what happens to you. They're not concerned about you. They are not concerned about your emotions. They're not concerned about the damage they're causing. What are they concerned about? They're concerned about the power, the supply that they need, which is why, in my opinion, this is the unforgivable sin number one. Sin number two, intentional neglect. A narcissist knows what you need. They know they just have to be compassionate. They just have to respect you. They just have to understand. They just have to take responsibility for their actions. They know all of this. They're not unconscious of it. They know what they need to do. How can I say so? Think about those good times when the narcissist was afraid that you might leave the relationship or they might lose control over you. They changed their behavior. They became this nice version of themselves. Why did they do so? Because they knew that is what you needed. They knew that is what is needed to keep you in the relationship. And if they had chosen to do so, they would have been this way continuously throughout the relationship. But they intentionally made you beg for the basic things, the bare minimum that was necessary to sustain the relationship. The respect, the understanding, the compassion, the presence, the intentionality, love, care. Think of all great things that are necessary for a relationship to grow and to nurture a relationship. You were deprived of all of that and they did that intentionally, which makes it Sin number two. Before we move to sin number three, what is the biggest sin, in your opinion, the narcissist has committed that is completely unforgivable? Drop your answers in the comments below and help other survivors feel validated in their experiences. Unforgivable sin number three, heavy guest lighting. They twisted your narrative. They twisted how you think, how you feel, how you see the reality. For what purpose? Because they wanted to control your narrative. Why? By controlling your narrative, they would get what they want. They would make you do things. They would make you accept things that you would not have accepted otherwise. So they grasped the control over you. They got you by the neck and held you there, pinned you down psychologically until you accepted their version of the reality and became compliant and totally obedient. They twisted, reformed, reshaped and changed your understanding of self 
them and the reality and how the world works in general until they got you to the point where you would serve the narcissist's evil purpose. What was their evil purpose? To get supply from you, to enable them, to accept the blame for things that were not your doing, to take responsibility for things that you never did, to accept the flaws that you never had, to see yourself as a piece of trash, to lose your self-worth, to lose your self-concept, your idea of who you are and what you stand for, just to give them the control to drive your life, which makes it unforgivable sin number three. Sin number four, smear campaigning. When they couldn't control you directly, they went on and ran these smear campaigns, knowing that the stories they are creating, they are just lies. They fabricated these web of lies. Why? Just to destroy you. Where was it coming from? It was coming from their absolute and totally primitive, animalistic, unprocessed rage. Instead of taking care of their anger, instead of knowing that, no, I need to respect this person. Yes, things happen in the relationship. I need to move on and I need to let them go. I need, I need to let them be at peace. No, they went on. They tried to control you directly, but you didn't give in. So they chose the people whom they could use against you by running a smear campaign and they destroyed your reputation or tried to do so. They destroyed your image. They changed how other people saw you, which caused a massive damage to your career, to the relationships that you valued a lot. They didn't care about the pain it would cause you. Quite the opposite, they wanted to inflict pain and they knew what they were doing. It wasn't unconscious. They knew by running a smear campaign, they would bring everyone to their side and you would be isolated and that would make them feel better about themselves. That would help them get at you and take the revenge out of their jealousy, vindictiveness, and punitive nature, which makes it unforgivable sin number four. Unforgivable sin number five, physical abuse. Not all narcissists, but those who are malignant, grandiose, and overtly abusive, they physically abuse their victims to the point where feeling safe becomes an alien idea for the victim who has been through this hell. Even after leaving the narcissist, it takes them decades, if not decades, I would say years, months to start feeling safe because they're always worried that this person is going to show up at some place, somewhere, and they might hurt them physically. They do not feel safe in their own skin, in the places that are still and stable, in the places that offer complete physical safety, trigger these people because they have been traumatized by the psychological and physical battering the narcissist did to them. The narcissists who are physically abusive are monsters, in my opinion, because my father was. And the person that you see when they are being physically abusive, in no way recognizable, is far, far from the element of humanity and this satanic, evil virgin that comes out, which is uncontrollable, that has no control over its actions, not theirs, its actions, and that just does what their rage tells them to do, which makes it unforgivable sin number five. Unforgivable sin number six, serial cheating, adultery, porn addiction, sexting, serial cheating on you with other people and hiding all of that from you, hiding the fact that they are cheating on you. When you catch them, when you try to hold them accountable, calling you crazy, twisting it around, blaming it on you, who does that? Someone who doesn't have a heart, in my opinion. At this point, I'm not ready or I'm not open to considering the disorderedness to their personality because this is what an evil person does, not a disordered person. In my eyes, it is evil. The definition of evil is this. You're causing intentional harm to the other person, knowing you shouldn't do that, knowing that they are their partner and it would kill them if they were to find out about this and you still continue to do that. And when they catch you, you turn it around, twist it around and blame it on them. If you are not evil, then I don't know what you are. If that is not evil, I don't know what evil is. What makes this sin unforgivable is the narcissist's ability to crush the person's 
ability to trust they betray you in the worst way imaginable because every single moment that you spent with them is spent in lies they constantly and pathologically lie to you and you never know what the reality is ultimately when you leave the situation and you wake up to the truth you realize everything was a lie so the whole relationship the whole situation ship from the beginning to the end is essentially or turns out to be a lie for you when you realize and when you wake up to the truth of it being a lie and at that point for a person who realizes this they are shocked and taken aback and it takes them so much time to trust again unfortunately in some cases they do not trust ever again they cannot trust because the trust wound is too deep to heal in the years they are left with so this is what makes it unforgivable sin number 6 the last one unforgivable sin number 7 exploitation narcissists see people as objects their grandiosity and entitlement make them see people as a piece of furniture as things to be used and thrown away and that is what they do when they seek supply when they run after someone when they chase someone they are not chasing them out of love or the desire to know this person or to or to connect with them or to contribute to their life in some way what do they do they chase this person they are after you or anyone else for either money sex materialistic gains or something that has nothing to do with love compassion care or pure humanity they do not see you they see the benefits they would get by attaining you by winning you over by putting you in the trap they use people as objects which flourishes their animalistic nature their nature that is only and only focused on survival and nothing else there is a lot more to exploitation but we'll talk about that in some other episode this was unforgivable sin number 7 i hope you resonated with this episode if you did let me know in the comments i hope you found it insightful drop a like if you did share this episode i'll talk with you in the next one until then let the healing begin